Hello YouTube, in today's video we're going to learn this effect. <laughs> but we're going to make sure that it works whether your face rotates or not. Last week we did a video on tracking the liquify effect to objects. Link in the description below if you want to check that out. But it only worked for position, not rotation. Today we're going to cover how to do it with both. So I'm going to open After Effects and get right to it. I have this footage that I used last week, but I want to use it again this week to show you the difference of how to now track it with rotation. So I have my footage opened up into a composition. The first thing I'm going to do is rename my footage layer to main footage. And then I'm going to right click on the composition itself and then select composition settings and rename the composition to main comp. Next, I want to track the position and rotation of my main footage. So I right click the footage layer and select track and stabilize and then select track motion. I change the track type to stabilize and click the rotation box. Since I want to track the entire face, I'm going to put my trackers in the outside corners of each eye. That part of my face shouldn't move much compared to the rest, even when I make a monster face. Since I rotate my face in this clip quite a bit, I want to set my trackers and tracker search area pretty large just to make sure I get a good track. After it finishes, I can click the apply button and hit OK to apply X and Y. Now when I play the footage, the face is stabilized. This looks like the effect that they did in the IT movie when Pennywise is dancing. In fact, it essentially is what they did. I close down the drop downs under my footage layer to keep things nice and neat and now I'm ready to pre-compose my main footage. So I right click the footage and select pre-compose and click move all attributes and then select open new composition and click OK. Then I rename this new composition to face comp. If I play the footage in the face comp I can see that it's stabilized on the face but as the footage rotates the corners of the footage get cut off by the edge of the screen. I need the entire footage to be visible the whole time so that when I reverse track the footage it will all be visible in the other main comp. What I need to do is go to the top and under composition select settings. I make sure that the lock aspect box is selected and now when I change the width the height gets changed by the same percentage. I set the width to 5000 and scrub through the footage. It's better, but it's still going outside of the edge of the screen. So I change it again, and this time I try 7500. And as I play through the footage, I can see that it never gets cut off. So that will work. The number that you will pick will depend on how much rotation is in the clip. Okay, now I can move on. I have these two compositions, and what I need to do is drag the main comp down under the face comp and into this little area that lights up when I hover over it. Now my main comp is on the bottom and my face comp is on the top. This might seem a little weird and not something you normally do, but we need to pick whip a few things between the two comps. Since we stabilized the footage on the face, we need to essentially reverse stabilize it in our main comp just to make it look normal again. If you don't quite understand what I'm saying, don't worry about it. Just follow what I'm doing and you'll be okay. I certainly didn't understand it when I learned this years ago from Andrew Kramer's Demon Face tutorial. I just used it and it worked and then somewhere down the line, I started to understand. So here's what I need to do. I'm going to increase the size under my two comps a little bit so I can work in the drop downs. I click on my main comp footage and in each of the comps, I hit P, Shift R, and Shift A. This opens up the position, rotation, and anchor point on the footage in each comp. Now there are four simple steps. One, I need to pick whip the anchor point from the main comp on the bottom to the position on the face comp on the top. Second, I pick whip the position from the main comp on the bottom to the anchor point on the face comp on the top. Third, I pick with the rotation from the main comp on the bottom to the rotation on the face comp on the top. And the last of these four steps is to click the little drop down for the rotation in the main comp and we will see this expression. We just need to click the expression and add one little thing to the end of it. Times negative one. That's asterisk minus one. That just multiplies the expression by negative one and this reverses the rotation from the face comp and makes the footage look like it did when we started. 
I drag my main comp back up so that the two compositions are tabs in the same window again. Actually, I can close the face comp because I don't really need it for my liquify effect. If I zoom out a little bit and play the footage on my main comp, I can still see the outline of how the footage is rotating so I can tell that it's working. Now I want to create a face tracker point to link my liquify effect to, like I did in the previous tutorial, which you can check out here if you'd like to. I could create a null and track the motion and assign it to the null, but I'm going to use this other method that I have fallen in love with. I select the ellipse mask tool and I control click in the center of my face and I hold control as I drag a mask around the face. I go to my tracker window and under method, I select face tracking detailed features, then hit track forward. After it finishes tracking the entire clip, I can only see the face, but I go to the mask and the drop down footage and I just delete the mask. Now I can see all of the footage again, plus I have all of my motion trackers available for the face. I open the drop down under face track points and then open the drop down under nose. The one I'm most interested in is the nose bridge, which is centered pretty well on the face. I could drag in multiple liquify effects and track them to different face trackers, but that really slows down the render time. So I try to do it all from the nose bridge tracker with just one liquify effect. Most of the time this works pretty well. I drag in the liquify effect into my footage and then I alt click the stopwatch for the distortion mesh offset. Now down in the comp, I pick whip it to the nose bridge tracker. I am going to close some of the drop downs now just to make it look a little less cluttered. So now I can start working with liquify and building a face. As a quick example, I'm going to do what I did in the last tutorial and bloat the eyes and then drag the nose down. Oh, by the way, this is the reconstruction tool. If you liquefied something and you want to remove the effect from that area, you can use this tool. In this case, the mouth got dragged down, but I want to return it to the original location, so I use this tool. When I play the clip, you can see that the nose turns correctly as the face rotates, whereas before it looked like this and had no tracked rotation. But this isn't the monster face I want to make. So I delete that liquify effect and I drag in a new one. And once again, I pick whip my distortion mesh offset to the bridge of the nose and I start creating a new monster face. I shrink the eyes and I bulge the forehead and lower it. I shrink the nose and I grow the mouth. After I get the roar looking pretty disturbing, I go to the liquify effect and look at the distortion percentage. I click the stopwatch and create keyframes for when the effect starts and when it's fully on. I watch my footage and I continue to adjust my liquify effect until it looks pretty hideous. So now I look normal at the start of the footage, but then I roar into a monster face. I want to add a couple of other things to this just to finish it out a little more. Again, it's kind of the same thing that Andrew Kramer did in his old tutorial. The first thing I want to do is open up the face comp composition. This is where I want to add the new effects. Adding them to this stabilized footage will be much easier than adding it to the main comp. I downloaded a grungy image off of the internet and I'm going to drag it into my face comp composition. I change the mode from normal to multiply and I scale it down just a little bit just to have a little more detail in the grunge on the face. It doesn't really matter how I position it so long as it covers the face. I could use the divide mode which is basically the opposite of the multiply mode but it seems to look best to me in the multiply mode. Here's a cool tip. If you hold down shift and you hit plus or minus, you can step forwards and backwards through the layer modes, but it has to be the plus or minus on the main keyboard, not on the number pad. So now I select the masking pin and I draw a mask around just my face. I click the grunge layer and I hit the F key and this brings up the feathering for the mask. I adjust it until I like it, but I can see the grunge a little bit outside of my face. So I open up the rest of the drop downs under the mask and I reduce the mask expansion just a little until all of the grunge stays on my face. When I go back to the main comp, I can play the footage and see that the liquify effect also affects the grunge, which is pretty cool. Okay, I want to add a darkening to the face and to the eyes. So I go back into the face comp composition and I create a new adjustment layer and I call it face darkening. I draw a mask around the part of my face that I want to go dark and then I drag in the curves effect. I pull the curves down to create some darkening. I select the face darkening layer and hit F on the keyboard and adjust the feathering to my liking. 
Then I create another adjustment layer and call it eye darkening. I create a mask around each eye and drag in the curves effect and darken them down. I add some feathering to the eyes and now the face is darkened and grungy. The final thing that I want to do is have these new effects become visible at the same time that my face becomes a monster. So I shift select all three of my layers and I hit the T key to open up the opacity. I can adjust all three of these at the same time if they're all selected. So I set keyframes for when I want these effects to start fading in and when I want them to be at 100%. I return to the main comp and play the footage. I make any adjustments that I need to and when I watch the footage, I see myself transform into something truly disturbing. So that's it for this tutorial. Next week, I'm going to finish this liquify series with a video about tracking the liquify effect to other things besides the face and some of the cool things that you can do with that. So I will see you guys then.